Right. Hey, Jane, did Mike, yes. Mike Wall get on? He I, did. I, well, okay. he got registered and he got the code. Okay. Hi, Joe. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you, Julie. Good morning, all. Yes, I saw that too. Happy anniversary, Joe. Laura, hi. Dorothy. Marlis is there. And <laughs> I'm in Virginia. Hi. Mute myself. Now. Good morning, Janet. How are you this morning? I'm doing great. Good. Good. There's Lev. Hi, Jane. Dennis. This is Christine. Could you do me a favor and change Jacqueline home to Christine Nevitt? I can't yeah, rename myself. Too. Thank you. Oh. How are you doing today, Dennis? We have a, a couple others I need to rename. To. Here, let me look around. The weather is way too nice. Oh. Yeah, I've got a, I'm working on a deck this afternoon for my sister, so oh. it's uh, not 90 degrees outside. How's things going up in Dwight, Earl? You doing okay up there? Yeah, everything in Dwight is just fine, Mike. Thanks for asking. Uh, oh. No problem. Good morning, Doug. Good morning. You have everything under control in Danville? Yeah, um, somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing we're doing well. I'm getting geared up and uh uh, getting ready for the team to start moving forward on July 1. All right. So Mike, Mike Wall was able to join us. That's great. Glad it worked out, Mike. Good to see you. Okay. How are we doing, Jean? I think you could, could head on on down the road. Yeah. On one. Should I just should I just say howdy all? <laughs> <laughs> if, if you notice, Jean has her cowboy hat and uh, bandana on today, uh, and I forgot I was supposed to be in country casual because uh, coming up here at the end of the month, uh, June the twenty eighth, for our uh, virtual installation, uh, as, as you saw of your invitation, said country casual. Uh, so we're, we're going to kind of make it a casual event here towards the end of the month. So. Sorry, Jane, I forgot my hat. Oh, it's all right. You know, I, I wear this normally, so it's all good. I normally have a floppy wide brim hat on. I do usually. Yeah. All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started here this morning. Again, good morning and welcome everyone to our District 6490's PETS, our President's Effectiveness Training Seminar. Well, again, I want to truly thank all of you for taking a portion of your Saturday to participate in this training today. It, it is greatly appreciated, and I'm sure you'll get some information from today's session that will help you in your years, President of your club. Um, I think by count this morning, we had 54 that had registered for the training. We're currently at 45 uh, participants. Uh, we had 24 president-elects that had uh, uh, registered and 10 president nominees. Um, so we had a, had a great, uh, great uh, sign up for our training today. Uh, as I mentioned the last couple of weeks, uh, this session will be recorded. Um, and uh, the intent will be to place these sessions out on our website so that 
you can review them at a later date if you wish. And for those president-elects and other district uh, officers, we'll be able to uh, view the sessions as well uh, prior to the beginning of the new year. Uh, again, I'll mention about the chat box uh, down at the bottom of your uh, screen. There should be a ribbon that would uh, uh, roll up uh, and in that ribbon would be your chat box that you're sure welcome to use and um, uh, ask questions, uh, make comments, uh, <clears throat> appropriately comments. And then, um, see, other than that, uh, I think Again, I'd like to thank those who made presentations last week. We had a, I had a, some great presentations Saturday, last Saturday at the Rotary Foundation by uh, Mike uh, Novolilski and Larry Howe. And um, then we had a presentation on the public image by Julie, uh, District Governor Julie and uh, Liz Palma. Um, I think we have, uh, well, let's see, we were going to do the poll for the uh, uh, budget first, right, Jane? Um, we do have, uh, today we do have one piece of business that we need, to, we do need to take care of, and it's approval of the District 6490-2020-2021 budget. Um, for, this is for the PEs only. Uh, the budget was sent out on May the 18th to all PEs. Uh, you've had about a month to review that budget. Uh, I did get a couple comments back, uh, and those comments were appreciated. Um, at this time, uh, for the president elects only, if you would uh, vote um, in favor of or opposed to the district budget for Rotary District 6. 490 for the year 2020-2021. So if for the president elects only, if you would vote your approval or opposition to the budget for this coming year, which will take effect July 1st. We're doing well. Just a few more seconds. I mentioned th these polls are anonymous. I think I had that question last week, uh, but we do, uh, the polls are anonymous, so. All right, we will go ahead and share those results. Well, thank you very much. Uh, the budget for 2020-2021 has been approved. I appreciate all of your support going forward. Now then, uh, let's do a couple of polls for Let's see, do we have some for the foundation? We do. A couple of polls. Uh, we had a presentation on a foundation last week, as I mentioned, from uh, Mike and Larry. Uh, so let's do uh, a couple of polls from that. Okay, when was the first Rotary Club started by Paul Harris? That's kind of a general question, I guess, but. Uh, starts with and John you can't vote you're just you're <laughs> oh it's too late I already did <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got some inside information there John so. a little bit <laughs> I never thought about that oh, 10 more seconds and then we'll close this one up looks like we're nearly there okay Let's see what we got. Hey, all right, yeah, February 23rd, 1905 uh, was our, the first meeting of the four gentlemen that started Rotary. Did you get that one right, John? No, I just, it's anonymous, it's anonymous. <laughs> You'll never know. All right. I will, I will just point out that April 19th, 1868 is Paul Harris's birthday, in case that date rang up. And the four-way test was uh, inaugurated into Rotary in 1932. Oh. What well, happened on May 1st, 1915? <laughs> That's the charter date of the Bloomington Rotary Club, of which I am a member. It's a plug. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you, uh, do you have another uh, foundation? 
In what year was the Rotary Foundation started? And you can vote, John. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Okay, just a few more seconds here. All right, I think we're probably set. Oh, a couple more coming in, a couple more coming in. Hopefully people are not Googling. <laughs> well, I imagine some of the president elects have got their Rotary Basics mm -hmm. handout booklet. Now I'm sure they've got that right there on their desk, just uh, thumbing through that to get the information. So. So 1917, yes, it yep. was started in 1917 by, do you have the question on who started it? Yes, it's the next question. That's the next question, okay. President of Rotary International started the Rotary Foundation and how much did he donate? All right, just a few more seconds here. Vote early, vote often. Often. Way. Okay, I think we're probably set. Let's see how folks did on this one. And uh, I misspelled clump. It's I think it's spelled with an H on the end, isn't it? Or, but it's it is a clump. It's a tough. It's a tough one to spell. I know that. Yeah. Sorry if I misspell it. Twenty six fifty was his uh, first donation, and um, so good job on that. And let's see. Uh, if you want to use your chat, I have a. I have a question here. Where did I put? It? Oh, here it is. I have a question. Uh, we'll start. This is on public. Uh, the public image. Uh, see what. See if you remember public image from last week, um, and you can use the chat on this one. What does C-O-P-E, COPE, stand for? C-O-P-E, what does that stand for? It's a four letter acronym for something. Mike, I think it stands for, they had to cope with me for a year. Uh, yeah, I had to cope with a big deal for a year there. I, I hear you. Create once, publish everywhere. Create once, post everywhere. Both, uh, there you go. They were listening to you. Is Liz on? I didn't see. Is Liz on? No. They were listening to you last week, Julie, since, since you're the big deal. Good job. Good job. Do we have a, a one or two questions for um, public image, Jane? You want to go ahead and do those now? Will your club appoint someone to serve as public relations chair for your upcoming year, 2021, 2020-2021? Do you have one already assigned? We're planning to fill one, don't know, and no, we don't have one. Let's see how that works out. Just a few more seconds. We'll give it about 10 more seconds. Votes are still coming in. Okay, three and two and one. Well, good. 42% yes, 28% yes, we plan to have one. So that's uh, my ad, right? That's about 70%. Uh, we'll have one for sure by the beginning of the year. So great. And I think you had one more public image. 
and we'll move, start moving on. Does your club have a Facebook page? Do you keep it updated? Yes and yes. Yes, I think so. Yes, <laughs> no yet? Yeah. Yet? But we'll have? No. I guess that could be Facebook. It could be some of the other. I, I don't know much about social media, so Instagram. Yeah, Instagram is a great place. Twitter and I would recommend LinkedIn as well. LinkedIn, that's professional true. organization. Mm -hmm. All right, about three more seconds here. Some options there. Great results on this one. Look at that. Yes and yes. Oh, great. Well done. All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, bearing with us with our polls there. So we appreciate that. So this, the precedent effectiveness training um, outline that I used for the last three Saturdays has been what we would have talked about in uh, Effingham uh, in March. So we, we talked about lead rotary, we talked about growing rotary, we talked about the Rotary Foundation, and we talked about public image. The other thing that we were going to do in March was to um, work on goal setting and work in Rotary Club Central and putting goals in for the coming year, 2020-2021. So that's our, our intent today is to give, uh, give, give you some information in regards to goal setting and working with Rotary Club Central. And I believe John and I haven't, haven't talked a lot about this, but I'm, I believe he's gonna talk about, a little bit about the Rotary Citation for this coming year as well. Um, so I'm gonna turn this over to John Haynes from Rotary International. He's with the club and district support, and he'll be presenting to us uh, about goal setting and working in Rotary Club Central. And I think he's gonna introduce himself but uh, he is a great individual to get things done at Rotary International. So if you need anything, any support or any uh, questions, John, John and he's got a, a young man that works with him as well, but uh, they can help you out. So I'm going to turn it over to John. Thank you so much. Um, I always like to joke with like, oh, please sit down. Like the applause isn't necessary, but we're all seated. So I'm, I'm just gonna assume you're standing up in your hearts. Thanks for being here and thanks for joining me this morning. Um, my name is John and I am going to put up a little PowerPoint slide deck that kind of helps introduce my team, what we do on staff, and then we'll jump into Club Central. So I'm going to put this post up here. And actually get to the start of this and get started with it. All right, can you all see my screen? Okay, good. All right, well, I belong to Rotary International staff, which is up here in Evanston, Illinois, just a little bit outside of Chicago. And we are made up of over 530 people in the Evanston office who help work alongside you. And beyond that, we have about 200 more on the international level. We're all overseen by our General Secretary and Chief Executive Officer, John Hugo. If you haven't had a chance to hear him speak, um, he will be speaking quite a bit at our upcoming virtual convention, which I could talk about in just a little bit. But basically, uh, the important thing to know about him is that he's my boss's 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 boss. Um, I belong, again, to the Evanson office here. Um, we have several other offices around the world in Brazil, in Switzerland, in India, Korea, Japan, Australia as well. There's another little dot here in Great Britain, and that's another group called Rotary International Great Britain and Ireland, um, or RIBI or RGBI. It's kind of difficult to describe how they're different from Rotary. Uh, the main thing to know about that group is that they are Rotarians, that everybody that goes through the officer roles or leadership roles will go through the same kind of training as you. You could partner with them on grants. Um, the differences between them are more back end and constitutional in nature. So it's kind of, it's a lot to explain. I've been with Rotary for about 10 years and I still don't fully understand it. And that's okay. There's, <laughs> I'm ready to learn. 
alongside you. I belong to the club and district support team. And we are, again, one of the only teams who have representation in each one of our offices. And the hope there is that we'll be able to present on regional topics, but then also gather regional information to help influence some decisions that happen at the organizational level, support documents as well. Um, this is my teammate, Andres. He uh, sends his greetings. He wasn't able to make the session this morning, but he and I, and we'll make sure that you have this contact information later in a different kind of format. But he and I uh, represent not only your district, but then 38 others throughout the United States, ranging from sort of the Great Plains out to DC and Maryland. So if you kind of took a cookie cutter in the middle of the United States, that's who we are. A very weirdly shaped cookie cutter, that's what we represent. And we talk about a number of different things. Policy and procedure is our main topic, and that would be things like the constitutional documents of the organization, the code of policies. Um, we help out with interpreting those details so that if you have a question or if you have a conflict or if you have some kind of uh, point where you need to reference the constitutional documents, just let us know. Um, we also help put you in touch with different resources throughout the organization, whether that is PDFs or learning courses or other people. Administrative tasks we can help out with, like chartering new satellite clubs. If your club is looking to uh, change its name, its locality, so a lot of paperwork and backend things. And then online support and helping out with our online tools like Rotary Club Central. So just in the sort of the basics, Rotary Club Central is intended to help clubs set and track their goals, explore data and trends, manage your activities and service projects, and then actually a whole lot more. And we'll dive right into that uh, just now. So I'm going to switch over to navigating to the tool itself. So there are a couple of requirements. One is that you have to be uh, an, a registered user of My Rotary to access Rotary Club Central. And the second thing is that if you're an officer or an incoming officer, that you need to be identified in that role in order to utilize the tool to its potential. Um, every single Rotarian, regardless of their level in the organization or their role, can log on to my Rotary and navigate to Rotary Club Central to take a look at the goals that have been set and the progress toward those goals as well. They just can't interact with the tool um, for, for editing purposes. And I'll show an example of that in just a little bit. Uh, there are multiple ways of getting to Club Central. Uh, I think there are about eight, maybe a ninth way. Um, and I'll kind of walk through what I think is the most comfortable way. Um, first is to log on to my Rotary. And you can identify that you've been logged on uh, by seeing this option to sign out. If you've uh, been associated with your club in the proper way, in this club snapshot area, you should be able to see club information about where you meet, who your president is, and so on. And then there is a link there for getting to Rotary Club Central, view club goals. If you're out on any other part of the website, along this top navigation, there are a number of different ways of getting to Club Central. My preferred route is hovering over manage and then Rotary Club Central here. And that's because I've been a club secretary for the last few years. Uh, and a club officer for years before that. And I just naturally come to this manage area because there's also this club administration area that allows me to help update our club information, whether it's meeting time and location, adding new members, um, letting go of some old members. Um, you know, a lot of activity happens in this space. So that's just become my natural flow. Another option is if you type in rcc.rotary dot org into your browser, you can bypass the main pages of my Rotary and get right to the tool itself. And that's where we are here. Um, before we walk through setting a goal, I kind of want to give just a little orientation of the layout. And the way that it's built is that regardless of your role in the organization, it's going to land on your own club's landing page or dashboard. And then from there, you can drill into other regions, or if you're an assistant governor, you can go to your club grouping and start taking a look at the trends there. And so your landing page is basically just some information that's been gathered, some trends. So we have things like membership, 
and gender, age as well. We get into projects, which I'll kind of explain how to, how to manipulate these things. And then the annual fund giving. You can zoom out to the global level. You can zoom to your zone, your whole district, your club grouping, and then back to your clubs using this navigation along the top here. And speaking of navigation, depending on what device you're using, this left-hand navigation will either be apparent for you or it'll be hidden away. It just depends on uh, if you're on a tablet versus a laptop. If you're on your phone, it looks a little bit different. Wherever you are, whatever device you're using, if this left-hand navigation is missing from the screen, there's this little, um, we lovingly call it a hamburger because it's I don't know. Somebody said that once and I was like, I'll never not call it that. But these little, these little dashes here will uh, hide or reveal that left-hand navigation. Now it's preset to go to the dashboard and it's also preset to go to the current rotary year wherever you are in time. That's important for this next little bit. So the goal center here is where we'd like to explore a little bit more. And it's again set up to the current rotary year. So as an incoming officer, um, you'll want to focus on clicking forward in time to get to the incoming goals. Now I should say that I'm in the live environment. This is for my own rotary club. Uh, I will, uh, you can see that we've set some of our goals already. I'm gonna walk us up to the point of hitting save I'll explain that you hit save, but I'm gonna hit cancel because I don't want to have a fun phone call later with my president elect. So <laughs> like, just know that if I accidentally hit save, it is fixable. Uh, if you could all help me remember different numbers, if I do hit save, what it used to say, that would be great. <laughs> we can shout it out in the chat. <laughs> um, but if you're missing this little edit button here, that identifies for us that we're still waiting on having you listed as the incoming officer. And that's an easy fix. You can let myself know, you can let Andres know. And that's like a, a very quick change. Um, that's something that also may be approached through using DACDB. Uh, so if you uh, haven't listed off your officers for next year, it's important to get them in because not only you have access to this tool, but there are five other positions as well. To kind of explain the history of this, Rotary Club Central replaces a paper document that used to exist called the Planning Guide for Effective Rotary Clubs. And if anyone was a president maybe 10 years ago or before then, you might remember this eight page document found in the president's manual that you were supposed to tear out fill out with your board. You were supposed to then review it with your assistant governor who would then take it and review it with your governor who would then look at that and say, great, good goals for the year, hand it back to your AG who would hand it back to you. And then you would hold on to that until the next year's pets cycle and then hand it off to your successor. I would say almost 10 times out of 10, <laughs> that stack of papers got left in a drawer somewhere or under a stack of other paperwork and it just wasn't utilized in the way that we thought it would have been. And so we moved to this online space to offer not only a, a location that everyone can access and take a look through, but it's something that more people have the ability to edit and change because really the goals for the club aren't just the responsibility of the president or the president elect, it's the responsibility of a good number of people. And so there are six positions that have the ability to come in and edit, again, using this tool here, and that's the president, the secretary, treasurer, foundation chair, membership chair, and if your club has an executive secretary or director identified, that person as well. So six people can come in and work with the goals that are here. There's another tool available out on my rotary called delegation. And that delegation allows all six of those officers to share their online access level with one other person in the club. Um, they don't lose their access, they don't lose their role as an officer, but it does mean that 12 different people could come in and help maintain the goals here and also the club administration section of my rotary. So uh, I point that out because uh, one of the things that I had to learn when I was a club president back in 2013-14 uh, was it's okay to delegate and it's okay to say like, I'm gonna trust that Jane's gonna take care of something and then uh, she's got all the access that she needs and she'll go do it and that's great because I am a control freak. 
And I, I lovingly admit that. <laughs> and that's now recorded forever on this webinar. So that's great. <laughs> um, in this space, what we've done is designed it so that you can navigate through, again, by main topics. When we first launched Rotary Club Central about seven years ago now, we listed off all 75, actually it wasn't more than 75, about 100 goals all in one space and you had to scroll and scroll and scroll. And we would say, choose the ones that make sense to you. And people still felt the pressure or the feedback was they still felt the pressure that they needed to fill out every single one. And so what we've done this time around uh, with the most recent update, which is about a couple of years old now, is we tried to break it up into smaller sections and then also present it in sort of an a la carte fashion to really drive home that this is your tool for use set the goals that are important to you as a club and then everything else we can worry about later on or maybe you can go back in and add them in so it's broken into categories like membership and engagement foundation giving service and so on if you do miss that experience or you really do want to see everything this all tab will show you everything whether you've selected it as a, an achievable goal or not and i'll show an example of that here now in the members and engagement area if I click on edit, you'll see that some have been grayed out. And that's because our club didn't choose this as an option. And if you haven't gone into the tool, all of these would be grayed out and you have to activate the ones that you would like to do. And I'll show an example of what that looks like right now because it's not activated or selected, I actually can't even set this goal. Once I do select it, it unlocks it and I can go in and set the goal for whatever I want it to be. There are some goals here that we can, as an organization, report back the achievements to you. And that would be things like membership, that would be things like foundation giving and, um, uh, and so on. For some of these goals, you'll see that you have the option of entering in information for the achievement. And that's because we couldn't tell you how many people actually showed up to your service projects. <clears throat> that's information that you would know hopefully at the local level or would keep track of at the local level. I'm gonna uncheck that one again just because, but setting a goal really isn't as painful as it sounds. And we've tried to provide you with some information from the past to help influence what might or might not be an achievable goal. And for a good example here, my club has set a goal of 41 members. And if I go look at this tab here, which is provided on every single one of the goals, regardless of what it is, it captures the last five years worth of history. And so you can kind of see, we've broken it up into more of a visual, uh, pretty color coded section here on the left and on the right, it's the same information, but just as numbers. Uh, we tried to appease both kinds of personalities. So um, if you take a look uh, back in our 2015-16 year, we had a, what we thought was achievable goal, and it turns out that it was very ambitious. We thought we could get 48 members by the end of the Rotary year. We ended up with 27. And so the next year we adjusted down to 40, and it ended up with 30. And we thought, okay, 40 still might be like a lofty goal, but let's see if we can get a little bit closer and a little bit closer. And then this year we actually got the closest we've been in five years to our goal. And that influenced our um, board for next year to choose a goal of 41. We can get probably two more people by the end of next year. We offer the history to, again, just help influence decision-making. You could be a little bit more ambitious. We could say, let's go for 50. Uh, we had a good year this year. Let's see what we can do. Um, you also might be able to adjust down and say, you know what, we think we are aware that we're probably gonna lose a couple of people to moves or to job changes or to family life. And so you could undersell yourself too. My recommendation though, is that once a goal has been set and agreed upon by your club, to leave that goal in place. I think it's very tempting to come in and make slight adjustments uh, along the way throughout the year because maybe you are reaching that goal or maybe you've reached it already. But my caution there is that if you're always adjusting your goal to match your achievement level, you're not really sending a signal to somebody in the future about what was happening at this time in history. So 
without having, uh, or because we didn't adjust this goal back down to what we ended up with the achievement here, we knew that, okay, we were super ambitious a few years ago, and then we weren't able to sort of remember what we changed throughout the years to make it a little bit more achievable. Not only did we reduce the number, we also really kind of overhauled our membership drive or the, the drive that we do in our mindset uh, to attract and engage newer members. And so we have like a little bit of a history there with that information. I'll give a different example of that over here. I'm gonna hit cancel, all right. <laughs> I'm gonna give a little another example of that over here in the foundation giving area. And the same idea here. We got past our goal for the current Rotary year of $2,500 as a club. We're a little bit smaller of a club and this is something that we felt was very achievable. And we uh, exceeded our goal. If we had continued to raise this goal even more to match where we are with our giving, to us, we would understand what that means, but to our district or to our assistant governor, it would look like we were just meeting the goal. And so, um, because we're extremely competitive as a group, which if we had recorded our last meeting on Wednesday, you would have seen we had a competition, which I won. Uh, we. <laughs> Uh, it was a name that tune, I'm the best. So uh, if you had seen like how competitive we are, we needed to see that we exceeded this goal and we needed for other people to see that we did surpass it because that means something different to us. Um, this foundation giving section includes things like the annual fund, Polio Plus, and then for our club, you'll see that we're a we kind of trend a little bit younger so we didn't have the opportunity or we don't have many members who are able to give a major gift, which is $10,000 or more to the foundation or a bequest because uh, nobody's really thinking that far in the future in our club or benefactors as well. Um, so thankfully we've been given the opportunity to deselect these types of things and then move on. Service is a very simple area. It's basically how many service projects are you going to achieve next year? Or, or work toward to do next year. The achievement you'll see here, I can't really fix or change the achievement here, but this is one of the confusing ones. I do have control over this and it's through a different section which I'll walk through in just a, section, a second, the service and activities area. Young Leaders includes things like Rotaract, Interact, Youth Exchange, and RILA. And Public Image is pretty much what you expect. What's your online presence like? Do you have a strategic plan? How often do you update your website and social media? And so on. Oh, and this is a good example too. There are some that, again, I have to walk in and type in some achievements, but then there are some that actually slide a little slider. Did we do it? Did we not do it? I'm gonna hit cancel again. And then walk us over to the service and activities area, which is here on the left screen. And actually, I saw something pop in the chat box just a second ago. I want to see if there's a question before moving on. I don't think so. Okay. So in the service and activities area, which again will help us drive this information here on the service tab, we'll just click on this. And I'll show some examples of what to do in this space as well. So this I've got set to an incoming year. I'd like to go back in time just a year because uh, I think that'll help flesh out some of what I'm about to talk about. So I'm gonna switch back to the 2019-20 year. And you'll see that you have opportunities here to either add a brand new service project, repeat a past project, and this is dependent on whether or not your club has entered information in uh, the recent past, let's say the last five years into Club Central, or Rotary Showcase, which is another tool that Rotary offers um, that in my opinion is more like a show and tell. When a project's done, you can post videos, photos, contact information, a little bit of a description about the project itself in case another club in, well, the entire world wants to replicate. And I could show an example of that too in just a moment. We'll, we'll jump out to the site again. Um, there are in this area, sections of completed projects, 
and current projects means something that you've entered in that may be ongoing or maybe the project is already planned but you haven't finished it just yet. And then you'll see some service summaries and trends at the bottom. All of this information that uh, shows up in this bar graph and then again on the count out on the goal center is all driven by one little button and let's go take a look at that now. So I'm going to act as though I'm adding a brand new service project here at the top. And it'll ask for some information from you. So what is this title uh, of the project? So you could say um, that this is the spring book drive. You can give a brief description of what this is. Be a little bit more eloquent than what I just said there. I'll add a period to make it really serious. Uh, you would choose the start date of the project. Maybe it's a week-long project, so I'll choose the 14th through the 20th. Um, I, this little project complete button is the button that I was talking about. When I slide this over, it helps drive the data in the achievements. Um, you could choose that it's complete right then, like say you're coming back and, and sort of filling in information about something that already has happened. Go ahead and mark it complete. If you're coming in and using this as a planning tool, come back in at the end of the project and mark it complete a little bit later. And the planning section of this uh, offers you projected area and then achievement area. So uh, if you think of it as a planning tool, come in and fill in all the projected items. And then when it's done, come in and do the achievement. We've made this really, really mobile friendly. So if you are in the moment finishing up a project, you could hop on uh, through your phone, click everything, uh, fill in the information in just those achievement levels, click the little slider for project complete, and then you can go about, you can go out to Denny's afterward and celebrate. Um, I prefer steak and shake. You don't want to see what I order, it's disgusting, but, <laughs> but it's who I am. Um, so in this area, you can project how many volunteers you would like. So say this is a project that we want 20 people at least to participate in. The number of volunteer hours has been a little confusing in the past, but this is the number of hours multiplied by the number of participants. And so if everyone was to give two hours of their time, the projected goal will be 40 hours of service. The achievement, uh, again, at the end, I would come in and say, oh, we had 25 people show up and they only gave us one hour of time, so that's actually 25 hours. In this area, uh, we have a couple of other things that you could collect. Say you're expecting monetary contributions and um, goods and services. In the past, we used to call this in-kind donations. This really is like, did the local newspaper give you free ad space? If so, what would that have cost? Um, did somebody help you with some tables or crates? Uh, anything like that. What would the monetary value of those donated goods and services be? We'll also say a good $1,000. And then down below are some additional project details. You could select whether or not you worked with a partner. Would it have been other Rotary Clubs? Would it have been Rotaract? Uh, a combination like the district and so on. It just tags this for future use. In a similar sense, the category allows you to choose whether it was a community service project. Was it a fundraiser? Did you work with young leaders? Did it address one of the areas of focus? And if I select this tool here, and actually I'll show you really quickly, this is what this looks like, adding the tag. If I selected area of focus, it'll add another category for me to choose which area of focus it addressed. And this particular book drive is addressing basic education and literacy. And so my preference is, and my hope is, that people will come in and utilize these tags and for kind of a selfish reason. We can look back over time and explain to other organizations what we've done as Rotary International and the Rotary Foundation for ending polio. It's been our number one project for 31st. Um, we know how many people have gone out in the field and conducted national immunization days. We know what kind of money has gone into those projects as well. And so we're able to look to other organizations like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and say, partner with us. Here's all of this information. What we haven't really done in that same time frame is collected information on all of the water and sanitation projects or all of the literacy and education projects or all of any of these types of categories here. 
in the areas of focus. And that's sort of um, why we're, we're asking people to collect this information or at least tag this information. So we could walk out and say, you know what, we're spending millions of dollars on polio, but we're also spending probably the same amount in each of these other areas. Are there other opportunities for Rotary to partner with other organizations or would this strengthen our relationship with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation? We don't know just yet, but we'd like to have that info. It does sound selfish. It does sound like uh, Rotary International benefits and it's flowery to say that like we all would benefit from that. But at the local level, I'd also imagine that this helps benefit your club when competing against other organizations for maybe grant money. Uh, more and more companies are trying to get more and more involved with their immediate community. And we anticipate that they would have a lot of requests for grants or funding or project support come across their desks. In the past, we would have said, tell your story, tug at the heartstrings of those individuals. But now that it's probably a little bit more competitive, we are saying, go ahead and tell the story, tug at the heartstrings, but then back it up with data. So if you were to catalog these types of things, I'm going to hit cancel here and go back out to your records, you would be able to say, not only are we doing this for a community, here's the proof. We've put in hundreds of hours of volunteer hours this year, just this year alone. We've put in this type of funding as well, and this is how we're giving back. And hopefully both components will make a strong argument for your club um, to, to go out and really showcase who you are. This also might help you tell your story when it's time to write a press release or talk with a potential member. Really, um, I, I really like the idea of the COPE idea of, of capturing it and then publishing it and telling your story often. When you're stuck for story ideas or when you're stuck trying to describe who you are to a non-member or to a family member, you could really come back and say like, look, we're doing a lot and here's the proof. I saw another item pop up. in the chat. That looks like it's more of a comment for everybody from Doug there. And a good note for everybody. But actually for the recording, I guess I should read that out loud. It's from Doug saying as an FYI, 6490, which is part of the Central States Rotary Youth Exchange, um, will not be sending out or accepting students for the 2020-21 Rotary year due to COVID. So if that's part of your original goals, you may want to change that since it won't be achievable this year. And I should say that's true for a lot of districts around the world this coming year. There are some other views here that I'd like to walk through really briefly, just to kind of give you a sense of what's out there. The global view here is intended to show you what has been set on an uh, international level and then what's been achieved uh, uh, the same way. This will also kind of give you a sense of just overall what's happening with this tool. So if we were to look at the current Rotary year, which has been selected, you could see that it's broken up by individual goal. And this also gives you, <laughs> this is sort of like a little cheat sheet for people. Every now and again, we're asked how many members, how many clubs, that type of thing. Um, uh, you could see here that it's broken up into the current membership as of today. And then this number here is the number of clubs that exist in the Rotary world currently. Now this number tells me that out of the 36,000 Rotary clubs around the world, only 19,000 <laughs> set the goal for club membership this year. Um, I have a feeling that the majority is here in the US, so great job everybody, but we have a little bit ways to go to get people to utilize this tool everywhere else. Um, you can see that like out of the uh, the goal of over 70,000 new members or members by the end of the year, we're pretty close. People are achieving that goal. And this breaks down into, again, those other categories that I talked about earlier, things like your zone, your district, your club grouping. And then by the individual goal categories as well. Another section that is worth taking a look at here is this resources area. So I'll click on that. Again, it's broken into different categories and we offer just some help guides and resources that we think might be useful when coming in and utilizing Rotary Club Central. Um, this first section, the general resources are PDF walkthrough guides. So everything that we talked about already 
is captured here into step-by-step, -step, one, two, three, do this, do this, do this type of uh, guidebooks. We've got membership, um, things like the Rotary Club Health Check, which if your club hasn't utilized, it actually is a really simple tool to help kind of gauge where you are as a club and where you might go as a club as well. We've got young leaders and service and foundation and so on. Reports is probably one of my favorite areas because you get a lot of good info and a little bit of data here. I'm a nerd, um, but it gives you information about things like club growth, about viability and growth for your membership over look, looking over the last five years or so. Um, a listing of the club uh, satellite, uh, satellite clubs that you might be sponsoring, or if you wanted to take a look in the service area here, a listing of your club sponsored organizations. This would be things like Rotaract, Interact, and the Rotary Community Core. Also in service, you can see your goal history by clubs. So if you really wanted to see a very large Excel file or what a really big Excel file looks like, this goal history by club is giant. And I would not recommend printing it because we're trying to plant trees, <laughs> not, not reduce them. Um, but it does give you an overview of what has happened in the last five years, every single goal. The service activity by club is really that service summary report. And so this would tell you all of these items that were captured here uh, in this space would just be kind of hard data. One section that I forgot to talk about, and I'll go back and take a look at activities before jumping into the citation is uh, really there is a report here that shows you where you are on track. It's just a little dashboard that says what categories you've achieved for the current citation and then what you may still be able to accomplish in the coming weeks. I'll explain the citation and how that's a little bit different for the coming year in just a moment, but I do wanna show in the service activities area two more bits. One is if I wanted to repeat a past project, you could choose uh, anything that's been captured here. I'm gonna choose this food drive, copy the project, and then just show that it includes the project title, it includes a little bit of our summary that we used the last time. All I would have to do is update the start and end date, maybe update a little bit of information in the summary. But then down below, just like the rest of Rotary Club Central, we showed you uh, here what your projection was and what your actual was. And that would hopefully help influence uh, what your projected and um, achievement would be for this project this time around. You can export a project as well into Rotary Club, uh, sorry, Rotary Showcase. And I'll show what that looks like in one of our finished ones here. We'll choose this giving factory. And really, um, again, you'll see the same information here. You'll see that it was complete, but a new button has been added here to export. Clicking this will send it out to Rotary Showcase where you could then can add, again, photographs, videos, a little bit more of a, uh, a detailed description of the event or project, and then share it out to the Rotary world. The potential there is that somebody might contact you and say, how do we do this too? And so um, the nice thing about that tool is that it is sort of giving people the liberty to, I don't wanna say steal, but borrow an idea and, and either improve upon or replicate or, or whatever, um, because why start from scratch? We talked a little bit about the Rotary citation, and I showed where you can take a look at that report. Out in the goal center, I wanna show just a little bit of a difference here. The way that the current citation has been set up, and actually over the last couple of years, there are uh, sort of a trifold brochure that you would get that explains not only this year's theme, but then different categories of goals. In that same document, um, it says some of these things you achieve and mark, and some of these you record on Club Central. And it was sort of spread across Club Central. Things like membership you would do as you normally would in the membership and engagement area. Things that you would normally do for foundation giving you would normally do in the foundation giving area. And then there were maybe six goals that weren't in any one of those categories. And so they got lumped into a section called Rotary Citation. And so if I go here, again, I'm in the current Rotary year and click on edit. You can see all of the different categories of the things that just didn't fit on that uh, and into a nice, actually there's a bunch. Um, <laughs> that didn't fit into one of these categories before. Starting with the new Rotary year, all of the goals 
uh, the citation is a little bit different. The request is to go through and set 25 specific goals spread out among these categories. And if you can achieve 13 of them, you will have achieved the citation. And because of that, because of the way that the new version is set up, this citation tab is actually removed for the incoming rotary year. You can see it's gone because each of the goals fit underneath these categories. And uh, I will make sure that Michael and Jane and um, your district leadership have our walkthrough guide that we've got available for the new year that basically just lists off what those 25 goals are. And then again, you pick any of the 13 of them and you achieve that citation. So it's a lot more approachable. Um, and this is sort of a, uh, a, I don't want to say gift, but it's sort of a change from uh, uh, not only Rotary staff, but then President-elect Holger Knack. Um, because we look back over the past couple of years and realized that clubs were getting so close. And then there were maybe one thing in one category that just wasn't achievable. Maybe they couldn't start a new Rotaract club and that's what prevented them from getting the citation. And so this year, the shift really is, let's focus on what we can actually achieve. And if you go past those 13, great. If you only meet those 13, also great. If you get to 12, maybe you can get to 13. <laughs> so um, be on the lookout for that document. I'll follow up uh, with a few different resources about things that I've talked about in the session to make sure that you've got it. And Jane says in the chat that, uh, you should have info in your second packet. Nestor had asked if the global summary can be expressed also in percentages. I don't know if we've offered that in each of these individual spaces yet um, without, let's see, oh, there's a description of it. Currently, it looks like no, Nestor, but let me take that as a note back to our uh, sort of behind the scenes team and see if that's something that could be built in. Are there other questions about navigating? I know I kind of sped through some of these sections. Is there anything that anybody would like to revisit or, or take a look at again? And I think it would be okay to either use the chat box to ask questions or if you're more comfortable to unmute yourself for just a few minutes and ask your question and then go back to mute. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Janet uh, identified in the chat box that Rotary will fill in your foundation giving as well as the membership numbers, uh, provided that you tell us when you add a member or remove a member from the tool. That's right. I will say that um, depending on how donations come in, in the Goal Center, we update our goals and achievements every single day. Um, but if you send it in by check, that takes a little bit longer than if you had done it by a credit card and, and so on. So these numbers will identify for you, uh, basically, we're, we're usually like a day behind with donations. Uh, and it just depends on when those things get processed. So, so I have a question. Sure. Um, 13 out of however many goals is needed for a citation, it, it, does that... What, what type of consequence is there for like setting goals for everything? Does that mean that you jump through a higher bar or is it still just 13? The threshold is 13. Um, if you were to set and achieve more than that 13, we don't have, uh, for the current rotor year, there is, you can achieve the citation, you can achieve it with distinctions. Um, and that was really something that President Mark offered for this rotor year. For next year, it's just please get to the, at least the 13. Um, and if you can go beyond that, uh, it's more of a local, uh, you get to pat yourselves on the back for doing a little bit more. But when you see these goals and what they are and see how achievable they are, it would be, I think, uh, very simple to go past that number 13. And then maybe for the next rotary year, the next president will bump up that minimum. Or they might not. It depends on what happens next year. Thanks for the question though, Doug. And let's see, I see something else that popped up into the chat here. Oh, and Jane, you wrote, there are two things that do not migrate between my Rotary and DACDB, and that's goals and foundation giving, and that's right. The things that do migrate from DACDB to Rotary's database would be things like membership changes, 
contact information changes, uh, as well as um, your officers for any given year. Mike asks, when will the new goals come? Uh, when will the new goals come out? They're out. They're available right now. So as long as you've been identified as an incoming president, and as long as your incoming officers have also been identified, um, you will have access to this tool to then switch into the current rotary year or from the current rotary year to the incoming year. I guess for just 25 more days or so, and then it'll just pop up as the rotary year itself. Um, and then you can go ahead and already work with them right now. And just should, oh, another quick, quick one. In, in the folder, the blue folder, the three ring blue folder that you received as your second packet, you do have your rotary citation goals and I believe there's a rotary citation uh, frequently asked questions in there. So they're in there, but we'll continue to provide that to the district too. And I will say that if you do have anybody identified for the incoming year, you have, that person has at least or at most one full year to work with these tools. So if you knew your incoming board already for the 2021 2022 rotary year on July 1st that will be available to them uh, on the little slider tool here because 2020 21 will slide into the main position and I should say that um, it also allows for you to go back in time by one year and we left these goals open for officers that were related to that rotary year in case there was something that they thought of or needed to make an adjustment we haven't really seen too many people going in uh, say like June of, uh, well, this year, 2020, to go back and work on these types of goals, just because it happened so far in the past, but we left it open in case somebody had some information to fill back in. Um, Janet posted saying, one thing that new presidents should remember is that you should always click the update after you enter your goals or make changes. Yeah, I think that's a very safe thing to say, Janet, that um, it would be rough to <laughs> go through and set these types of things without hitting save. Um, for our club, we make a habit of anytime we're in a specific category, just hit save uh, right then before you move into the next category. One other thing that I might suggest to the club is that our club, um, goes through something that this year we termed orientation, so a board orientation. Um, and with that, we sat down and not only talked about the year ahead, but we also had come up with what we thought were the manageable goals for the 2019-2020 Rotary year. We didn't just set them and forget about them. We then, in the weeks that followed, and, and really this would have been June of last year, uh, or actually in the first part of July, we sat down and instead of having a speaker at our club, instead of having any kind of other program, we sat down with everybody and walked through all of these goals. We made sure that we invited and pressed for everyone to be at the first meeting or the first couple of meetings so that we could do this particular thing. We wanted to make sure that every single member had the opportunity to voice agreement or dissent uh, based on what we had said. And then we changed the goals, some of them live in that space. Uh, we got the buy-in of every single person in the club. And then throughout the year, if we had a speaker cancel, or if our program chair just couldn't think of a program for that evening, we pulled up Rotary Club Central onto, uh, we meet in sort of a, it's a steakhouse, but it's mostly a bar. Uh, they have TVs for us to utilize. And so we're able to pull this up in that space and say like, all right, let's take a look. Where are we right now this quarter? If you could get in the habit of checking on this at least once a quarter, you'll notice that in June, you won't be rushing to go in and fill in your achievements. Um, if you can make a habit or if uh, somebody can make a habit, any one of those 12 really, of filling in or, or marking your service projects complete as they're happening, you won't have to come in in June and try to remember what happened five months ago. Um, so just try to, try to make it a habit. Also explore this tool. There's a lot in here that uh, I kind of glossed over or, or led to. Um, there's not much that you can break. It's stuff that I can break working on the back end of things, 
Um, but if you get to a point where you feel like you've saved something that you didn't intend to, we can help walk through making the change or clearing that out for you. With that, I think there are a couple of other things that if you don't mind, I'd like to show. Uh, it's out of this space. Um, oh, thanks, Janet, that's very kind of you. Uh, back out in my rotary, if you go to the manage section, brand center, if you haven't explored the brand center yet, there are some really, really nice tools. I can see already though from your backgrounds that some of you have visited. We've offered uh, in the brand center some virtual backgrounds for your Zoom meetings so you don't have to show off your house if you don't want to. Um, but in this guidelines area are a couple of things that I think would be quite useful, especially since you focused a little bit on um, public image in the last couple of weeks. Um, and maybe this was brought up, so I'm sorry if this is repetitive, but in this guidelines area, we've loaded in a tool here that is for uh, basically a quick start for social media pages. So if you're not comfortable with using Facebook just yet or Instagram or Twitter, or don't have a sense of which one is the right one for your club, this quick start guide kind of talks through each one of them and how you might utilize them. With public image, I would say this exact same thing to you as an incoming uh, president. The more people that are helping out, the better. Uh, I think <laughs> as somebody who does a lot of public image stuff for my own club, it's exhausting or it can be. And so um, in the last couple of years, I've made sure that we have a good team together so that we can delegate out responsibilities and have people posting in different spots. Um, gosh. If anybody hasn't been a president before, that's the piece of advice that I'm gonna offer everyone. Just delegate and learn how to say no, but say it nicely. <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much all I've got set up for you today. Is there anything else that anybody would like to take a look at? If not, we can turn things back over or I can stop the share and everyone can, I'm not gonna dismiss you. I'll let Jane and Mike do that. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and give control back over. Well, thank you, John. We really appreciate that. A um, lot of good information, and uh, we'll, uh, uh, like I say, we appreciate that. Uh, Jane, did you have uh, some go forward items for us now? I do. Um, we have one more poll and then a few next step slides. So I'm going to launch that last poll. John, that was great. As usual, you are incredibly helpful. I learned a lot. Oh, thank you, John. Thank you. And thanks, everybody. That was great. So here's our here's our last poll. Well, the uh, we're having, we're starting our virtual Rotary International Convention a week today, June twentieth. Um, the, the sign up is available out there on the Rotary International website. So I was thinking, when and where was the first Rotary International Convention? And uh, Bloomington, Illinois, uh, Evanston, Illinois, who, our friend John, who works in the Evanston, uh, New York City, or Chicago, Illinois. And we'll give it five more seconds. Just to, uh, you know, as, as a start here for our virtual. Now, this was an in-person, not our face-to-face, -face, in-person convention, not the virtual that we'll be doing here in another another week. And there's our results. And Chicago in 1910 is correct. What happened in Bloomington in 1915? Oh, we already knew that, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Shameless plugging. It's all good. <laughs> and Evanston a year later after the first Rotary Club meeting. Okay. All right. Again, thanks, John. And Jane, you've got some some go forward to. We want to thank everybody for joining us. It's been a really uh, interesting way to do pets <laughs> and hopefully a helpful way for everyone. Some of our next steps. Within the next two or three days, DACDB will auto email you uh, a link to a quick survey and we'd very much appreciate if you would take uh, the three minutes estimated to complete that survey and give us some feedback for this year and continuing information for president-elects, but also for planning for next year. 
Mike just mentioned, please re register for that um, virtual installations and not just mentioned, but we have mentioned registering for your virtual installation ceremony, country casual wear, and be sure and invite your friends and family and your club members to join you to, in that celebration. We do appreciate you taking the time to read your Lead Your Club manual to review courses in the, for new presidents in the Learning Center at My Rotary. To review those presidents packets, you've received two so far, and I'm putting, I'm going to put together a third part of the survey is to tell me what you'd like to have in that third packet. And we encourage you to reach out to your assistant governor for support as the year begins and goes on. Last, we hope you will set up your leadership team. That's where you add them to DACDB. That auto migrates to my Rotary and gives them access then to my Rotary once they register for their account there. And let's start talking about goals. Set up your goals. And again, those don't migrate back and forth. So you'll use my Rotary for that. And very soon you'll receive information um, about the district grant for 2021. And those applications will be due September 1st. So that to me is part and parcel with your goal setting. We hope you will strengthen your membership with a club membership chair, and we hope you will encourage giving to the Rotary Foundation with your club foundation chair, and we encourage you to tell your club story to your community with your club public relations chair using that brand center. We hope you get the district newsletter a lot of information in there. We post quite a bit on our page and our Twitter account, as well as our website. All of these places are great places for you to go to find out what's going on in the district. Additionally, we do recommend double checking your club's online presence at this time before you get your year started. Make sure it's accurate. Date, time, how you handle membership, who you welcome and how you welcome and all of those things as well as just making sure it's timely. Um, double check that Facebook page for sure to make sure that your last post wasn't in 2017, that hopefully it was last week. All right. I'm all set. Good. Don't forget, awards due June 30th. Well, I was going to ask Julie if, uh, if you had anything to pass along and yes, uh, just don't forget to apply for all these awards. They're waiting for you. You all have done such great things this year. Let's get it, get it in. Let's apply. And the citation, again, is uh, put your, goal, your finished goals. And we're waiting to see what uh, has been accomplished this year. So thank you, everyone. I saw that Julie Stump was on um, for, uh, at the meeting today. Julie is the awards chair. Julie, is your email working now? Because I've sent a, a nomination in. We need Julie to unmute herself. I'm unable to do that for her. Here she is. Um, I haven't tried it today. I'm having Yahoo problems. So I sent out saying use my husband's and Janet said it didn't work. So then I sent her another one. Janet did the, the redhead stump work. Well, it went through, but I don't know if you got it. So let me okay. know because I have some other award nominations. To okay, see. good. Okay. we will need to let the everybody else yeah. in the district know which. Yes, is. I, yes. I'll check and then I'll, I'll, Jane, I may be sending you another message. <laughs> There's yeah, something we'll going on with my work. Yahoo. Account. Yeah, we'll get it worked out, Julie and Janet. Yeah. We'll get they it all worked out. That people can send them to me and then I can email them from home, you know. So we can, we can get it all out so everybody in the committee knows what's going on. So, sorry. <laughs> no. No. Computers Techno are when they work. <laughs> yeah, technology is wonderful. You're right, Julie. Thank you. Uh, anything else, uh, Julie, District Governor Julie, you, you want to pass along? Uh, everything's go going well for the end of the year. So thank you, everyone. Okay. Uh, I see Deb West is still on. Uh, did you have anything for your AGs that you wanted to pass along now as well? Just from the AGs perspective, your assistant governors are also getting training 
um, and many are on the call today. Uh, we're also making sure on Tuesday to go through all of this information with the assistant governors so that they will know what you know and can be helpful. Um, John, that was very helpful, and I'm going to suggest that the assistant governors review your, uh, your per, uh, presentation before uh, we meet again on Tuesday. But if you're having any problem at all or you have some minor problems, um, your assistant governor will be able to help you. And if they can't, Jane and I can help them help you. Um, mm -hmm. And we will be communicating very soon to you, because we are making a couple of changes, exactly who that person is and how they can be of help to you. So um, we look forward to that. And uh, the assistant governors will also be on the installation. You'll be seeing who they are if you haven't already had a chance to meet them. But those assistant governors are specifically there to help you. And we wanna make sure that you get what you need. So thank you. Thank you, Deb. Uh, with that, uh, I guess another note for the PEs this week, uh, Thursday night, I'll set up a Zoom. I've got a Zoom meeting set up uh, for a happy hour for the PEs. Uh, you're welcome to join me at five o'clock on Thursday the 18th. And um, if you have any questions or any comments or want to network with the other presidents around the district and ask questions about what's going on, if you got to you know need, need some help with something, we'll be there to uh, listen in and um, uh, try and answer any questions and maybe toast a, a, a beverage or something. So that's this Thursday, the 18th at 5 p.m. I'll set up, I've got a Zoom meeting set up for that. I'll send that link out. Again, sign up for the Rotary International Virtual uh, Convention starting on Saturday the 20th. Uh, a lot of great breakout sessions, some uh, uh, great uh, general sessions coming up. So sign up for that. And with that, um, I'd like to thank John again for his presentation. Always a great job. It's always great seeing you. Appreciate the, all you do for us. And um, we'll get the, we'll get your contact information out there so everybody can give you a call. So uh, we'll take care of that, John. No problem. Uh, again, I'd like to thank uh, everyone for attending the session today, uh, taking out some time in your uh, your Saturday. Really appreciate that. Hopefully. You picked up a little bit of something today to help you in your goal setting and uh, help you get started in your, your new year. Again, I'd like to uh, thank Jane for setting this up and working through the polls and, and helping on the back end of this. So again, if you need anything at all, uh, just give, uh, don't hesitate to either give me a call, drop me an email, anyone on the district committees, um, um, get a hold of them and they can help you out. And uh, we appreciate, you know, all that you do. Uh, and I guess my final comment, which I've made for the last couple of weeks is Rotary connects the world to open opportunities to miracles happen, not only in yourself, but in, the community and in the world. Yeah. Thank you all for uh, your participation day. We appreciate it. Good day and enjoy the weather. Thank you. Thanks. Nice job. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Julie. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you on.